Hi, welcome to Mindful Motherhood, where we explore skills to enhance our family and work lives. Today, we're exploring how to invest in your community through entrepreneurship with Mia Moss, founder of Black Coffee Fort Worth. I'm Jamaya LaShore with Mothers Lead the Way team, and I'm eager to be joined by Mia Moss. Hi, Mia. How are you doing today? I am well. How are you? I am good as well. Super excited. Let's go ahead and delve right into these questions. Sure. Would you mind introducing us into your journey as an entrepreneur in your community home, Black Coffee? Yes. Well, um, I live in Fort Worth. I'm born and raised here, and I decided to open up a coffee shop. And this is after I had been in education for about six or seven years. I love coffee. It was actually my first job out of high school was working at what is now Starbucks, but it used to be Seattle's best. And I just found that it helped me to come out of my shell whenever I was behind the bar talking to customers. And even though it was in the airport, I still had a lot of people that just really wanted to have conversations with me and talk to me about any and everything. And so I thought that was so interesting. Um, because you would think that the airport is super fast paced that, you know, people are just coming and going, but I did have a lot of people that would stop and talk to me. And so I just kind of fell in love with coffee because again, it made it easy for me to talk to people. And so I wanted to share that with my community, um, going to other local coffee shops. It just inspired me. It made me feel at home and I wanted that feeling on the East side of Fort Worth. So I decided to open up a coffee shop. Um, located near Texas Wesleyan University. And I actually grew up right down the street from where the shop is. And I live about five minutes away from the shop. So it really is home and it really is for my community. I love that. So just from gathering what you're saying, it's something that is a unique because it is home for you. And Mm -hmm. it's an uplifting place to add to your community, give the those safe spaces you once had um, working in your first experiences with coffee. So as a mother, how do you feel um, environments that foster communities are advantageous for both mothers and families? Well, it's important, um, you know, just to have spaces you can take your kids that are safe, that are, you know, places where you can kind of sit and, you know, have fun as a family. Um, I actually, when I'm not working, sometimes I will be at the shop with my kids. I have a um, a mini library that I started, and that came out of Blue Zones with Texas Health. Um, they actually helped me with that, and they um, actually furnished all of our books when we first started. Um, so my son, I have an eight-year-old. He loves to read, and so he will pick up a book each and every time he's in there. A couple of weeks ago, we went on a Saturday morning. We played Uno with some of our family members and it was all, you know, me, my kids, my husband and some family. So I really wanted to be an environment for any and everyone. So, you know, everyone doesn't have kids, but we have people come in there, they'll work. I have one young lady that comes in every Saturday and she knits. And then I have people that they come and they bring their own games and they'll play games. And it's just good for my kids to see on, you know, in their community spaces that are safe enough to do those things. Um, We're in a space where we've been pretty much forgotten. It's a food desert. Um, You know, we don't have a lot. And so it was just, that's why it was important for me because I want them to see that you don't have to go to the other side of town. You don't have to go out of town to have these kind of spaces. And my kids, they really enjoy it. I love that. Um, That's so like crucial to just, A, first and foremost, being a mother, you're definitely killing it, leading the way with (laughs) opening up a space that is hopefully to become a pillar of your community for centuries to come. Um, But also to have that kind of openness for everyone, do what you need here. Um, Just building on that and just knowing that that sense of belonging is focal to us in our development as people. And especially for children, they need and feed off of that. So that is absolutely amazing. Um, I've heard that the inspiration from Black Coffee comes from not only being the first way you were exposed to coffee through your grandparents, but also because of your heritage as a Black woman. So as an entrepreneur who incorporates her heritage in her business, what would you say help connect your background to those around? I think that um, the, the connection comes from me being so open to share my culture with everyone else. It's not something that I'm holding on to but it's something that I'm trying to allow other people to engage with. So when they come into the shop, 
you know, I'm unapologetic about who I am and it shows in the artwork that we have inside of the shop. Um, it shows in like, I have a drink that's called the black eye, but people know it as the red eye. It, it's a coffee with a shot of espresso. So it's very, very strong. They call it a red eye. Um, because it'll literally wake you up. <laughs> but I got because again, I wanted to be a part of my culture. I look at it as like, it's a, it's a great punch in the face. You know, like it's that thing you need in the morning that's going to get you going. So I was like, no, I'm going to name it a black guy. But I wanted everyone to kind of, because I, I enjoy other people's cultures. I love to learn about other people's cultures. And so um, through the music that I play, um, through the interactions that we have, um, I want everyone to be able to experience my culture and see why I believe it's so great to see why the East side is, you know, such a wonderful place to me. And so I think it's because I'm so inviting. Um, and I hope that that translates to everyone. Um, I think that's what, you know, makes people kind of enjoy that. And again, it's like, I'm, I'm inviting you into my space, but also I want to learn about you as well. Yeah, so it's a give and take friendship and you understand that something has to be given first, that invitation, that offering actually in um, black communities, that is a bigger thing is being able to have people embrace our and the good things we see about our culture and we right. love. Um, so I love that you're sharing that with people. What do you feel like is one of your biggest challenges you face as a working mother? Ooh. You know, uh, mothers are already hard on themselves um, because it's just not easy, you know, raising children. Um, there's so many things to think about. You know, you don't want to be selfish, you know, but um, it, it really is balance. So balance is like the hardest thing. Um, I want to make sure that my kids know that I'm there for them um, and that I take time out for them. Um, and so that's something I'm, you know, constantly struggling with, but figuring out. And um, it, it really is like me saying no to things and and doing things with my kids. Like there was a um, street market this weekend and um, it was called Open Streets. And it was so people could walk on one side and on the other side, they could ride their bikes, scooters, skateboards. And so we took our youngest um, so that he could do that. And it was an all day thing and we had a great time, but it was the fact that we had pushed everything else to the side. The shop was fine. <laughs> and I put into into my child um, the same with my oldest. He's into basketball. And so we've allowed him to join, you know, some um, AAU teams. And so we're putting everything into that. And that's important to him because he sees that we understand how important it is to him. So we're traveling and going to different games. And it, it really is a balance. And um, at first, you know, I didn't have that balance. It takes time to develop that. And as I move forward, you know, I'm going to have to figure it out again like you know it's just a constant thing but I'm trying to give myself grace and I'm also talking to my kids about everything and sometimes I will take them with me to things that I have to do um, because I think it's important that they see it but also that you know if they're with me they understand that I still think that they're the most important thing in my life so you know it, it's just yeah balance is just the thing that you're constantly trying to figure out. That's amazing. We, um, for Mothers Lead the Way, we constantly talk about work-life integration, which is our tool um, mm. in not just trying to keep these roles separate from each right. other because they're going to overlap. We're human. We can't split yeah, ourselves absolutely. up and be like, I'll put half of me here. Half of mm -hmm. me can go over here. No. So we talk about integration a lot. And it sounds like you've got those steps down of grace of incorporating um, their feedback, their interest in prioritizing and being able to say no. That is probably one of the mm -hmm. hardest things to do. It is as a mother, a hard worker, anything. It's like, <laughs> uh, I can do it. And it's like, no, no. Right. Even if you can't do it. <laughs> No is okay to say. So it is okay. I absolutely love that. Do you um, have anything where you would say most of your support in making decisions that you feel like are tough or feel like may weigh heavy on you? Or do you feel like that support or that drive to get those decisions made for the um, best of yourself and your family? Where do you feel like that comes from? So um, I get most of my support from my family, my husband and my mother-in-law. Unfortunately, my mother passed. Um, when my first son was one. So um, I, I've been fortunate enough to have a great mother-in-law um, and she supports 
both of us because we're both entrepreneurs and she loves her grandkids. And so anything we need, especially for them, she is definitely willing to do. But I've also learned that integration that you speak of. I learned that from her because my husband growing up, um, he went everywhere with his parents. Both of his parents were in city government. And so he would go everywhere with them. He would go to meetings. Um, so he was he was actually taught by a few of their colleagues. Uh, he learned piano. He had a tutor. So he was very integrated in their lives and their, you know, everyday events that they had going on. And so I just realized it was it was fine for me to take my kids places. I have kids. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I want them to be in my life. They are a part of my life forever. So it was one of those things. It was just easy for me to do that because, you know, I had talked to her and she had been doing it forever. Um, so, yeah, I have that support. And then I actually have so much community support because people are excited to have a space on the east side that they can call home, can call their own. Because I, I fully believe that this is not just my business. This is for the community. And so they can have ownership in this. And and people are excited and they support me. And so because of that, I'm able to talk to so many different people and bounce ideas, ask questions. You know, if anything's going on, I have a lot of people that I can call on from all over the city. Um, and I'm appreciative of that. That's amazing. Well, my condolences is on your mother, but I'm so happy that you, you have the support that you need and are in the places that I feel like you definitely belong. Mm -hmm. So that is such a power story right there. And to have such a great pillar as inspiration and to see it work out with your partner and how he grew up and just be able to apply it to your kids and be like, okay, like, no, this is normal. This yeah, is what absolutely. should be normal. So to take that, take that power and that ownership over how you're going to do business for your life mm -hmm. is amazing. So I have two more questions for you. Okay. As someone who pursued what you love and are pretty successful at that, what <laughs> mindsets do you feel other working moms should challenge to do the same? So I have developed a um, process that, you know, I do everything afraid. I'm a very introverted person. Um, if I could stay home all day long, I would stay home <laughs> because it just takes a lot for me to be out in the world. But um, when I decided that I was gonna open up this coffee shop, it had to be something I did afraid, otherwise it wouldn't have gotten done um, because I would have taken the easy route. So I immediately went into, you know, um, just, I don't know, I was just laser focused and I was like, I'm gonna get it done. And so anything on the outside of that, that vision, I just couldn't see it. And everything that I was afraid of, I couldn't see it. I could only see what I was doing. And so because I kept that in mind, I was able to move forward. And that's how I operate every day. And so I would just encourage anyone to do it afraid. You could be scared. You know, you can think of all the reasons it might not work. Do it anyway, because you're not alone. There are so many other people doing things that could help you in this journey. And also don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Anytime you get in a room, anytime you go to an event and there are other women, entrepreneurs, um, people in the corporate industry, like the corporate world, just ask questions. It does not hurt to ask. They'll either answer you or they won't, but at least you were brave enough to get that question out. Um, but nine times out of 10, you're gonna get an answer and it's gonna help you further your career further your idea your dreams and just know you have these tiny little people that are looking up to you and no matter what you do they're going to love you and you don't have to be this super successful person success is actually in the eye of the beholder so that could mean anything but these kids they love you for who you are and they see what you're doing and they appreciate you doing what you do for them love that doing things <laughs> while you're afraid that is yes. That is a testament to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. My dad would always say, scared money doesn't make any money. And that was something he would say <laughs> constantly in basketball. Um, yeah. You will miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So absolutely, sayings like that, they exist for a reason. And I think a lot of us do things out of fear because we're constantly thinking about consequences and right. what comes next. And so when you're able to have that ability to challenge that fear and just be like, you know what, I'm going to do it. Let me use this fear as motivation. And I know that I can ask for help when I need it. I know I have support. 
Um, or if I don't have support, I know I can find support. So Mm -hmm. just being able to have that faith in your vision, in your dream, in your goal, and your ability to, you know, expand your mind. Cause that's really what it takes is just, it's a learning process. It's a growth Mm -hmm. process. So yeah, I love that. Are there any resources you found helpful and would like to share with our working mothers community? Oh, wow. There are so many. Um, so score is great. Um, they have everything you need for business. If you have any questions, it's score S C O R E look them up. You can get mentoring. Um, they have zoom meetings for every subject you can think of. And so you can just uh, go to them for business resources. I, I would also just suggest whatever field you're in to find someone that you deem successful that you um, see doing, you know, the thing afraid, you know, or something that you would, you know, be afraid of doing and reach out to that person. It doesn't hurt to reach out to see if they have a few minutes to talk to you. Maybe you could bounce your idea off of that person. Um, that's great. And Jemiah, like you guys are a resource. <laughs> so yeah. that that's, that's perfect. Like to have, to have this platform, it's amazing. And so I would suggest like continuing to follow this platform, which I'm going to do, and I'm going to send it to other people because um, usually, you know, I, I have a friend group. And so we're always sending each other things um, to, you know, look at different organizations just to help us along. Um, and there's also Her Texas, H-E-R, Her Texas. They are really great. It's all entrepreneurs, women. and um, yeah, they're, they're a great resource and they actually meet up. So it's good because you get to sit down with women that are in the thick of it with you. So yeah, they're a really good resource as well. And we also have, it's every March, um, myself and Katrina Carpenter who owns Carpenter's Cafe and Catering. Um, every March we do a women's pop-up market for uh, women's history month and we invite any and all women all business types um we've had everyone people that sell books people that sell jewelry um a massage therapist um food trucks just anyone because we want women to be able to get their business out there so people can see it people can purchase people can come to you if you're an administrative assistant we've had a woman do that as well come out and get clients and to help and we've had accountants. So um, you can look out for that as well. Come and reach out to us, reach out to myself. Um, I love talking to women. I love talking to mothers. And so, um, yeah, just reach out. I love that. You are well equipped. That <laughs> network is strong. Thank you for introducing our working mothers into all those great resources. And once again, You guys, this is Mia Moss from Black Coffee, and thank you guys for tuning in for Mindful Motherhood. Stay tuned for our upcoming podcast where we will plant more seeds to grow your work and home life. See you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.